Hey, what's up, everybody? Andrew here. Today we're looking at a thermal camera for the iPhone, and this one's made from infrared. This is the P2 Pro, where it retails for $250, or you can get the P2 Pro and the macro lens attachment for $300. They also have an Android version available, but today we're going to unbox the iOS version. Let's get started. So the camera comes in this nice little black box with infrared logo on the top coming in gold. It's pretty nice looking packaging that looks very secure. Let's see it inside here. It's a little bit difficult to open. All right, there we go. You got a little pamphlet here greeting you. Let's see what it, what we have in here. So it looks like a pamphlet here, instruction, a microfiber cloth, or it looks like a case for the camera. Some instruction manuals. It's in Chinese here. Let's see what we have in the back. So here we have it in English. Quick setup instructions here to guide you through. Next up, it looks like it's a warranty information, warranty certificate, just in case you have an issue with the camera. All right, let's get to the main attraction of the show. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the infrared thermal P2 camera. Wow, this thing feels really small. I've had the Flare 1 camera before, and this one just feels about half the size, if that. Very lightweight and feels very premium as well. Nice little metal finish on here. And here goes the macro lens attachment with a cover on as well. That way you don't get any scratches on your camera. Wow, these feel really incredible. I'm just blown away by how small and compact this is. Oh, it comes with a little screen protector here to protect the lens while in transit. Let's go and peel that off. Boom, there we go. I'm also very impressed with the build quality. I like the body, the design of it, and how small and compact it is. Also, the spec sheet looks amazing. They claim you can do up to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,112 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, negative 20 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius. This camera features an ultra high IR resolution sensor coming in at 256 by 192. Also features a 40 MK sensor running at 25 Hertz frame rate. That is incredible. We'll be sure to put it to the test and give you guys good examples of what it looks like. To download the iOS app, simply go to the app store, search for infrared, and then scroll down, you'll see thermal P2. Simply download this app and you'll be up and running in no time. They've been pretty active in updating this app too and fixing a lot of bugs. so. That's good news right there. Just simply set it up here and go through the setup process. It gives you a brief demonstration of the settings and app. Just hit next. Got a couple of more settings here and now you're live. This is the black and white mode. Now let's take a look at some live footage here from the Thermal P2. This is the M1 MacBook Pro here. The temperatures are running very cool. If you guys don't know, the M1 and M2 chips on the Apple MacBook computers are very efficient, they run very cool, and the fans hardly come on. Next up, let's look at this car here in the Texas heat. It's sitting in the driveway, the hood's reporting at 132 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at the picture of my hands here, that's crazy. Wow. This camera will also come in handy for tracking hot spots for door insulation spots that are going bad or not sealed properly here. Just look at this door here, for example. See all that heat coming in here on the crack of the doors? Obviously, we have an insulation problem right here that I'll have to address, but also check a look at this TV here in the back. Look how hot the Samsung TV runs. Keep in mind, this is an older model, probably about 10 to 11 years old, so this technology is not up to par like for today's standards, but you get the point. That thing looks very hot right there. Look at the hot spot right there. FYI, if you're trying to measure some high temperature measurements, kind of like an oven or higher, make sure you change the measurement mode to a wide range, otherwise your picture will come out grainy like this. Now let's take a look at the difference with wide range mode on. Here you also got some different palette options here to describe the temperature. This is white hot, black hot, rainbow, iron red, aurora, jungle, golden red, medical, dim light, gold, red hot, and city mode. Next up, let's take a look at an example of a V6 Toyota engine right here. This engine has been sitting idle for roughly around four or five hours, give or take. Even then, it's still hot. Keep in mind, this is in the Texas heat. Now, let's look at it with the engine turned on. It's been on for approximately two to three minutes. Look how hot it gets already. Look at this section right here by the radiator hose. Wow. Now let's take a look at the exhaust manifold. This thing is starting to get very hot. 
the oxygen sensor is now reporting 334 degrees Fahrenheit. There's also a cool setting here that can show you the actual picture of what you're looking at. Look, see right there on the top right? That's actually pretty cool. Look at this, guys. Let me try to get you a better view right here. So it just gives you a better idea of what you're looking at compared to what the thermal sensor sees. Now let's take a look at the side of the engine where you see the water pump pushing the coolant throughout the system to keep the engine running efficiently and not overheat. Alright guys, here's a brief walkthrough here of the Thermal P2 camera app for the iPhone. Here's the shutter button. This will refresh the image if you're having image issues. This one's the picture in picture. This one will show what the main camera in the iPhone and the thermal sensor is seeing at the same time. Now let's look at our sub menu here on the top left. Here you got professional thermometry mode, image settings, automatic shutter switch, continuous image capture. Let's see the next option here is your temperature unit. You can change it to Celsius, Kelvin, or Fahrenheit. Now we got temperature alarm. You got high temperature alarm setting, high temperature threshold, low temperature alarm on and off switch, and low temperature threshold. Let's go back. You got your burn prevention. Now let's go to general. You got your language, theme settings. You can change it to dark or light mode. And last but not least is your help section. Next up, we're in live mode here on the palette color options on the screen. All right, let's take a look here. Let's go to video. Let's click on palette. So this is let's start at the first. Here's white hot. Then you got black hot. And the most popular right here is the iron red. You got some other options here. Aurora. Jungle. Golden red. Medical. Dim light. Gold. Red hot and city mode. Now let's take a look at some additional options we have on screen. Here you got image flip, variable correction, image settings, temperature display on, and measurement mode. Let's dive deeper here. Let's go to variable correction. Here you got your EMS settings, ambient temperature, and you can adjust the distance. Next up, let's see image settings. Here you can adjust the brightness levels and the contrast. Let's go back. Let's see what else. Measurement mode. Here you got your high image quality, wide range, and automatic switching. And last but not least is our image flip option here. Here you can select 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 270. You can also turn on the infrared image flip. There's just a ton of options and features with this infrared camera. I'm pretty impressed, to be honest. I mean, at this price range, you're getting tons of options and features. All right, guys, our next test here is we're going to measure a 2.5 inch traditional spinning hard drive here. This is from a laptop. So right now, as you can see, the image is decent, but it's not great. So that's where the macro lens comes into play. But here's a picture in picture mode here that I'm testing to see where I'm looking at. That's pretty cool. All right. I'm going to put the macro lens on about. See, see right here. I'm coming on right now. And let's zoom in and see the difference. Wow. There we go. We're refreshing the image. All right, here we go. That is so much better. That is insane. Look at that. You can see the capacitor right there on the left. Wow, there goes the chipset right there. That is crazy, guys. Look how clear that is. So far, this small camera may be small and compact, but it packs a punch in terms of features, performance, and price. Overall, I've been blown away at this price point. All right, so next up, we're going to look at our professional mode here. Here, you got four additional options here on the right you can choose from. First option is scale. This will scale up your temperature from the lowest to the highest and give you a graph. Next up is frame. Here you can frame an area and look at the temperatures from the max to the average to the minimum. You can also put additional frames here. So that's pretty neat. All right, let's delete these two and let's see what's next. Let's delete. All right, let's go to the line. Let's draw a line here on the temperatures. We're looking at the M1 MacBook Pro. Look at all these additional lines here. Again, you can look at the average, the max, and the minimum. And our last option here is our point. Just point to an area and it'll give you the current temperature reading. You can run all four of these simultaneously without an issue. Alright guys, let's get to the end of the review. Overall, I highly recommend this thermal camera, especially at its price point of $250 for the standalone camera or $300 with the macro lens kit. The small compact size is one of its main selling points. I also love the fact that it doesn't have a battery like the Flare 1. Having a battery inside makes it a planned obsolescence. The image quality is far superior than the Flare 1 and Flare 1 Pro. 
I also love that it comes with the optional macro lens for those close-up shots where you need more detail. The thermal P2F for iPhone has been a pretty smooth experience. The team at Infrared has been updating this app pretty frequently, so that's good news. So far I only had one hiccup on the app where the camera wouldn't launch, but a simple restart of the app was all I needed. Alright guys, this about wraps up my review on Infrared Thermal P2 camera sensor for the iPhone. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button as it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in buying one of these, be sure to check out the comments section for the affiliate link or I'll post it in the description. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.